Hey guys, quick video. This is the simplest rocket stove to build. Just started it up about a minute ago. It's already smokeless. Well, a little smoke coming out. It takes a couple minutes for the bricks to warm up. I'm doing a test on this um, ceramic tile to see if it holds up to heat. I'm going to put it basically at the top of the chimney or the heat riser. Not exactly smokeless, but I want to I want to test the tile, see how it holds up. The tile cracked in <laughs> in just a few minutes. It cracked. It's returned to smokeless. Like, where does all the smoke go? You know, it's amazing these rocket stoves. It's incredible, it really is. Well, we know where it goes. All the smokes burn up as fuel, but it is amazing. It's amazing what these little things can do. I mean, this is just this is just blocks stacked on top of each other haphazardly. Doesn't have secondary air and all that tinkering stuff. Adding that three foot piece of insulated stove pipe that I made really does help. The longer you can make the chimney, uh, the longer you can make the riser, the more it's gonna not just draft properly, it'll draft on its own anyway. It'll, it'll eat up the smoke, it'll burn up the smoke. The rocket stove drafts with a very little chimney, but if it has a very little chimney, it doesn't have enough time to burn up all the smoke. Obviously the top piece of the chimney should be directly on the bottom piece. I, I just put those four blocks there to test that piece of tile. You know, it shouldn't, shouldn't be like that, of course. All right, let me show you real quick how to build this. If anybody's interested, you can count the number of fire bricks yourself. Um, each section here of chimney or riser is six fire bricks. One, two, three, four, five, one on the other sides. So um, let me, I'm gonna dismantle the chimney. Um, show you how the, the top of the chimney just fits together you know there's there's no mortar here or anything like that and then I'll show you when this is disassembled I'll show you the bottom part this is the start of the chimney or the heat riser ow that's hot should have waited a little bit longer um, that's it where it closes off and gets tight there is called the port on these batch box uh, rocket stoves. You pinch it off, I don't know, I just estimated it looks to be about 
just about two and a half inches and you just create that configuration to start your chimney or heat riser all the bricks on the bottom are all on their end and um, I mean, I'm gonna actually wait a few minutes these, these things are hot um, and I'll show you the rest the ceiling on the firebox is just you know fire bricks just laid on top and there's they're only on the sides by about a quarter of an inch if you were making it yourself you just probably should just move that over a bit because these are on the verge of falling off Ow! still hot so that's it um, there are six fire bricks for the base two rows of three for the base of the firebox the base for the heat riser of the chimney is two fire bricks so the entire base is eight on each side you simply have four fire bricks laid on their side no mortar and then this is the the start of the chimney or the heat riser it is six bricks and of course you just these normally would would touch you just you just bring them out a bit you bring them out ow I don't know about oh, two and a half to three inches and that port whoever came up with it these rocket stove tinkers it does it does work it really it increases the way like a nose cone on a missile it, it increases draft draw it creates uh, turbulence in the bottom of the heat riser so the, the smoke immediately starts being burned up as fuel um, that port I mean there's there's you know there's all sorts of diagrams where they'll tell you exactly how big the port needs to be it, it you know it doesn't it doesn't have to be exact I don't have secondary air in this I don't have there's no mortar um, but this is the basic design and if you did mortar it up uh, you would use well the heck you could use almost anything for this if it was like a temporary setup if, you, if it was a permanent setup you'd want to use uh, three parts sand to one part clay um, if or you know re refractory mortar for fire bricks wetting the fire bricks first if you know if you want to spend forty dollars a bag you just need a thin layer of refractory mortar um, actually the fire clay is so damn expensive you might as well just, you know that's thirty dollars a bag on its own three parts sand to one part clay and I add a little bit of type N mortar and a little bit of, of, type, of lime um, but yeah I mean for something so small you know one bag of refractory mortar forty to forty five dollars it's probably best if this is going to be permanent you know just you want to make sure all the air you know all the air seams are sealed up so nothing gets in and out It'll, your draft will get better the ability for it to burn up the smoke will get better and dunk your fire bricks put them in water for 30 seconds submerge them and you put in an extremely the way the Russians do it if you want to do it right if you're trying to build one of these and have it last for 10, 10 years you do an extremely thin layer extremely thin layer of refractory mortar and then you scrape it off and then 10 seconds later you apply another extremely thin layer I don't know why the Russians do it they do it, it I've tried it it works um, it's not real easy to get these refractory bricks to bind together especially if they've been used or they've already been, been burned in a fire so um, either way refractory seams or seams on fire bricks should be extremely thin um, probably overkill to, to put it on thin scrape it off and then 10 seconds later put, put it on again your theme should be a, your, your seam should be a quarter inch or less basically you, you just want to mimic with refractory mortar just mimic just a dry stack just mimic what I did here just it should just look almost like bricks stacked on top of bricks and um, just slightly tap everything down so everything's level when you when you dry stack or you, you have some some differences here like two of these aren't exactly the same as the one there which you know that's you make up for that when you apply your mortar and your level and you use a rubber rubber mallet refractory mortar is a little strange it just it just doesn't I don't know it's not real strong if you have a piece that flies off onto the ground the next morning you can just crumble it in your hand so you think there's something wrong with it but it's all kind of like that 
and when you create a real thin, if your if your brick is soaked and you create a real thin seam or joint, it'll it'll hold. I mean, you, you can see it's all dry stack. There's no mortar here. You don't need it to do much. You don't need it to bind much. You're not going to go up with your your riser. Go up, you know, if you can add 12 more bricks onto your riser, it's better. Go up as you know, not as high as you can, but you can go up another two or three feet. There's almost no chance of having any smoke. And um, you know, so that's it. I mean, there's a lot more you can do with these rocket stoves. This is a tiny little version. But even with this, you could throw a barrel on top, seal up the barrel, and heat your house. I mean, this is, it's an amazing little thing. It really is. So the, the J design of rocket stove, which was, we all were um, making those 10 years ago, the J design, they're, they're, they're inferior to this, to this design, um, where you just have the stick sticking in the one side of the J. Those sticks can burn up the J, can smoke your house out. The draw is usually pretty good with those, but with this, you, you know, if you make it, you, you just come along and you just mortar a door. You mortar in a door. And if I was making one of these permanently, I would, I would do another layer of fire bricks and create a, and make, make a, um, put a grate in, you know, under the air coming from underneath via grate or a seam, um, like a forge has a seam. Um, where a wood forge has a seam where the um, air comes under the wood and um, I would I would do that and then I would have a, a full door here sealing everything up once the woods in and have the air come from underneath using a grate and for temporary reasons you can even use that landscape fabric or whatever it's not called landscape fabric that's something else gardeners I always confuse this it's that it's that steel stuff that comes in a big roll at Home Depot and Lowe's I mean for for 15 or 20 burns, you can even use that. It'll it'll hold up for 15 or 20 burns to create a uh, like a real cheap grate. Um, I think that most people that have this design, this batch box design, they don't use a grate, but I think it would be it would be a little bit better. All right, guys. Now, last thing I can't resist: stay safe, be safe. Uh, I, I do believe in this. You, you know, cover, put some heavy stuff over your coals so the wind doesn't take an ember, especially if it's been dry. Wherever you, are, wherever you are in the U.S. or abroad. Stay safe. Cover your coals like I did. I'm not mocking it. I think that's important. Very little smoke. That's always my goal. Never want to smoke out the neighborhood or have somebody use one of my designs and smoke out their street or their block. It's not right. So it's only been going for about 10 minutes. That smoke should go down. Um, we'll see. I'll uh, take another video in about 10 minutes. That's a cheap door. Shooting for barrel temperatures with this design of at least 450. It's only been going about 12 minutes. It's got a little ways to go. Got some smoke. I want to go away but it's not too bad considering all the cement block and masonry block is cold that always adds the coldness of the whole stove adds to the smoke and uh, but it's got good speed it's got uh, you know good draft tell from how quickly the smoke's coming out and the smoke is pretty thin it's only going to get better I think This is the final level before the ceiling or cap. I'd like to get one more row, but it's fine for the tests. If I was going to build this thing for real, I would go up two more rows, but um, it's fine for the test. And slowly give the smoke and gases more and more room 
um, of course, you know, this this will be a ceiling, so they're only, it's only going to be able to get through two halves and a quarter, which is enough. On level eight, I'm going to start putting the brakes in the middle. So the well, that's where you, the, the air is in the bottom. You load through this door here. I just have some insulation in there. The uh, smoke and gases and heat has to get over to the other side and um, you start by making, I, I, it's three more levels until my ceiling, start by making a thin channel and then increase the width of the channel as you go up. I'll show you when it's finished. Also I have a hole here that starts it, actually the draft. You, you, it's thin, letting it across and it gets, gets wider. Um, some people just make a gigantic hole at the top. I don't think that's optimal for draft. Okay, it's pretty terrible, but it only has to hold up for a few weeks or, well, a week after I start conducting these stove tests. It's been dry. I'm not going to conduct the stove test until we get some rain. Um, you know, it doesn't have, to, doesn't have to hold, and I'll be gentle when I load the logs, so um, it's better it breaks down easy and I don't have to crack my bricks. I'm putting some fire bricks in the stove, but I want the mortar to be very temporary. I'm going to break the stove down in just a few weeks. I just want to see if it works. And I don't want to damage the fire bricks because they're expensive. So you just use mud as your base. I mean, you could use sand. And this mud here in, in Pennsylvania is very clay, a lot of clay. So you just use a little bit of type, type S mortar. A little bit of type S mortar with mud. And, let's see, I'm, I don't want this to be extremely temporary. I don't want really any strength at all other than to hold for a few burns. So, there you go. That should be all I need. That's probably too strong. I'll show you the consistency when it's done. And here it is. If I wanted it to be, you know, last for five or ten years, I would just add maybe three more shovels of type S or even type N and it would set up you know really well um, basically it's just like adding clay you can tell you have clay in the soil if uh, when you wet it you can make you know you can pack a ball and the ball stays together there's certain ways uh, you can tell if you have a lot of clay in the soil and um, you know there's a ton of it out back for free